Go. Okay. Ready. So this is the inelastic collisions uh, lab. The air track here will provide a frictionless surface for the glider and use the long gliders as opposed to the short gliders. The long gliders work better for some reason. Um, it's possible that the short gliders don't get enough lift from the air coming out of the air track there. So, so make sure you use the long gliders. Make sure that they have the bumper uh, ring on them, attached to them. It's very simple. They're usually, when, they, when they're in the box, they come separate. And they look like that. And you can, on either end, you can put the bumper ring in. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the air track. It's going to be loud. It's going to sound like a, a vacuum cleaner. Um, and then I will place this uh, glider at the end as far to the edge as I can. And the bumper here, the edge of the bumper, will represent the location of the, of the glider. What will happen is I'll let go. It will slide down the inclined ramp, um, <clears throat> hit at the bottom there. Of course, some of the energy, some of the kinetic energy will be uh, turned into potential energy as it compresses, and then the potential energy will return back into kinetic energy as it pushes off and it will come back up. But of course, not all of the kinetic energy is conserved in the, in the potential energy of the deformation. Some of it is released in the form of vibrations, sound waves, actually a little microscopic heating. So when it gets the energy back <coughs> from the... <coughs> excuse me, when it gets the energy back from the compressed spring, it will not have all of the kinetic energy it started with. So it will move slower. <clears throat> it will have a, a slower upward uh, uh, velocity than it did a downward velocity when it made contact, which means it will not come back up as high. So it may, it may have started off at, let's see, it may have started off at 152 centimeters, but when it comes back up, it may only go up to maybe 130 or 140 centimeters because it lost some of that kinetic energy. And you're just going to allow the students to let that cycle repeat again and again for approximately eight or nine uh, cycles until the, um, there's so much energy loss that they can't really tell the difference between one height and the successive height of the next one. So each one they're simply gonna uh, record on the first iteration uh, well, how, how high up it starts, about 153 centimeters. On the second iteration, where it comes to, again, they're, they're always watching the end of the bumper here, where, where it comes to, and in successive ones, it'll be small. In successive iterations, uh, this bumper will come to smaller and smaller points. Each one, they will calculate the elastic coefficient by taking the square root of the previous height over the next height, right? So the previous height over the current height, you take the square root of that, and that's the elastic coefficient. Okay, that is also explained in the handout, uh, which you can go over in, in class. So this is a pretty good uh, handout. I make uh, two for each table. <laughs> it is not the lab report itself. Um, generally, I make them write up their own lab report for this. But uh, uh, this, uh, this PDF is good, and I make it two copies for each table. But I tell them not to take it. it this itself is not the lab report. Okay, so um, one last thing before I turn on uh, the the air track and do a little demonstration is that we usually use these little wooden blocks and the wooden blocks have two profiles. They have a short profile or if I turn it like this you can see they have a tall profile. So I would make sure that, it, that the students are all doing this consistently. So I usually tell them to use the short profile um, but it's up to you but just make sure that everyone's doing the same profile. Either the short profile or the tall profile. And when they're measuring um, if, if you want them to derive uh, 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 anything in terms of angles, I would always measure the, uh, the distance from the back leg to the front leg. That's the horizontal distance from the back legs to the front legs. And the vertical rise would be the height of this, of this block right there. So that would be the vertical rise. And then the horizontal run would be from the back legs to the front legs. Okay, so now let me, I'll put the, I'll turn the vacuum, uh, or it sounds like a vacuum cleaner. I'll turn that, uh, the air pump on, and then we'll watch for several iterations. It'll probably go for eight or nine iterations before it becomes uh, too, the, the variations become too small to measure.